I come into work on September 11th, and I come into work 7.30 that morning. And I'm sitting around the kitchen, and we're having a good time, joking and laughing. And then the alarms go off. And it's for a nearby hospital. They have a steam leak. And the engines go into the steam leak, and the rescues go into the steam leak. And I'm working a one-man truck, and I sit at the firehouse front door, front watch area with my cup of coffee, and then a phone rings. It's from an off-duty fireman. He's in Rescue 5. He worked last night in Queens in Hazmat. He's coming home on a BQE, and he tells me, Bill, I just saw a plane hit the Trade Center. I said, I am in no mood for fooling around today. No one's here at the firehouse right now. It's a clear, beautiful day. I'm, I'm in no mood for fooling around. And I hang up hit with him, and I call my boss, a lieutenant, up here on Roosevelt Island in New York. And I tell him, I said, Lieutenant McQuaid, I just got a report of a plane into the Trade Center by an off-duty fireman. He said, you know, the same thing just came across the computer. I put my gear on the rig. I get on the highway. It's a clear, beautiful day. I look out to my left, and I can see the towers. I can see the smoke coming from the one tower. With that, I went over to the chief. I said, Chief, what can I do for you? He said, Bill, I can use your working out of the North Tower. Make your way to the North Tower, report in over there. I surveyed the scene, and one flight up, people were coming down a, a staircase. And they were coming out of that staircase, and some were going to the left, and some were going to the right. The only thing that would ever stop that line, coming down the staircase and then exiting, was women who had shoes in their hands, heels in their hands. They had come down 20 or 30 flights, and they were carrying their heels. And in this area, there was a lot of broken glass. And I said, if you're going to put on your heels, please step aside. And they did. And they put their shoes on, and they continued walking. It was going great. 200 feet to your right, down the escalator, which was shut off, down the escalator, and you're out the building. You made it. Good job. And then I hear something collapsing. I knew something from above was coming down, but I didn't know what. I jumped inside those double doors. I remember I shut them. And then I jumped in the corner of the room. They always tell you the corner is the strongest. I jumped in the corner. There was a pipe there. I hugged that pipe. I had my flashlight that over my shoulder, up at the people. And the noise got deafening. Everything went black. And I said to myself, well, it's a matter of moments. And then it stopped. It was still pitch black, but now it was silent. You could hear a pin drop. And then just a couple moments later, I started to hear people screaming. And I said, these are the people on the other side of the door. I just told one more fight to go. And two police officers, two emergency service cops, NYPD, are coming down the stairs. And they said to me, what's up? I said, I think we're trapped in here. So me and him just started running and bowing our bodies against that door taking turns, him and I. We'd hit that door and get it open a little more each time, so we got it open about that much. And I went out in the area, I said, if you can see my light, come to my light, I'm a fireman. And the other police officer, John DeLara, emergency service cop, he came over to me, he started lighting up the area with his flashlight. With that, he said to me, where are you from? I said, I'm from Rescue 5 on Staten Island. I said, where are you from? He said, emergency service, number two, up in Harlem. He said to me, you know, he says, I got a two-year-old boy at home. I said, yeah, I got a two-month-old at home. He said, I got a six-year-old boy at home. I said, I got a six-year-old boy at home. He said, man, we should go back to the door, see how many people are left in that stairwell. I said, maybe you're right. And as soon as we got to that doorway, his boss, his sergeant, was there. And he pointed at me. He said, I think we get out of this building now. Now we had to go between that door outside the North Tower and Six World Trade Center. It was about 60 feet or so. And we had to run across a 20-foot gap with debris falling down. And Officer Delara had no gear on besides pants and shoes and shirt. So he ran first. And he looked up. He said, it's safe. Everybody run. And we all got underneath the overhang of Six World Trade. And about 40 feet away, I saw a window about this high up it began. And it was already broken out. And I said, if anything happens, that's the window I'm going for. Well, we weren't out of that building 30 seconds. And I heard the North Tower coming down on top of us. I never looked up. I took one, maybe two steps towards that window, and I got picked up and blown 40 feet in the air. I remember smacking into the wall. I fell down. I tried, tried once, and the second time I made it up into the window. I crawled underneath the desk. I pulled the chair out so I could put my head under the desk, and I got in a ball, and I just started getting buried. The noise was deafening again, and then I said, this is it. And I said goodbye to my wife. I said, go out to my two kids. 
And when I said goodbye to my two-month-old, I said, man, you'll never know your dad. That hurt like hell. That night, I was in the hospital. And I get a call from my brother-in-law, Tommy. And he's in Rescue 5 also. And he said, Bill, did you get the information? I said, what info? And he said, all the guys from 5 are missing. I started giving him every name a guy I had breakfast with. And he said, Bill, they're all gone.